Welcome to an American Homestead, podcasting live from deep within the Ozark Mountains at an elevation of 2,200 feet. It is, what time is it? 8 Central, 9 Eastern. You just over a little bit. And, and it's great to be back. All right, there we go. Is that right? Is the microphone right there? Okay, that's good. Okay, so um, got a jam-packed show for you today. We've got some news items, happenings going on around the homestead. So, um, got my cup of coffee, decaf. She won't let me have real caffeinated coffee this late. So, uh, <laughs> crazy for you. You could have it if you wanted it. <laughs> you know, you shouldn't. That would be bad. Real bad. Okay, so, um, welcome. Glad you guys are here. And so, uh, got a lot of stuff to talk about tonight. And we have a trivia question. Ooh, I forgot to get the prize. I'll have to get it right before we do the trivia. What's the prize? It's going to be Nick's all again. Oh. And maybe something else. Maybe a, I don't know, we'll see. Maybe a seed packet of your choice for the spring. Can you get something that is taking up room back there? <laughs> Nick's all taking up a lot of room. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, we'll figure out something. It'll be good. So, um, anyway, um, I don't know. What do we do this week? What do we do this week? Um, you want to talk about all the stuff you're doing? You're doing a lot. You're actually doing more than me, I think, sometimes. Um, yeah, I mean, I've been working really hard every day. Really uh, hard on on the, um, the house. My dad is building, and I'm, well, painting some and cleaning a lot. But I just... At the end of the season, when the flies finally die, um, you have to go back in and clean the latrine. <laughs> so I titled this video "Fly Poop Cleaning Life on a Homestead." Fly poop cleaning. Yeah. Um. So most people don't know, I don't think, because a lot of people in regular homes don't get enough flies to notice, but yeah. we have. I mean, she really likes the the lighter colors around the home. And um, I like white. Yeah. <laughs> and so when a fly lands, normally what it does is it poops and it leaves these little tiny, tiny, tiny black dots. Yeah. On dots things. All over everything. Well, then, okay. I, I think that what happens, though, is it leaves a little tiny black dot, but then the flies are attracted to each other's black dots and so they come back and do it all over again on top of each other's so yeah. it's a mess and so what you have to do is at some point go through and clean it up and we have a, I mean they get the mirrors you know in the bathroom they get the i mean all along the ceiling and yeah. and what's it what's the the um the crown molding the molding um, they really, they really, really like anything that is in, that has corners or is in the center of a room. If it sticks down in the center of a room, we have, um, where our trailer, uh, double wide, um, manufactured home trailer was put together is a, I don't know what you would call it. It's, it's, um, it's just where they put the trailer together. I don't know what you would call it. Um, I don't know. It's just like the, it's like a, it's like a molding. Yeah, it's like a giant molding. Um, yeah. So and it and it sticks down, kind of like a soffit, maybe. Anyway, they really love that. So that's probably gonna be need to be repainted. So you did that today. You went where all where all did you clean today? Um, probably mostly in the kitchen. I took everything off the shelves in the kitchen and wiped everything down. And, uh, oh, I probably, yeah, I did, I did all of the upper cabinets in the kitchen and then, um, above the dining room window, like you probably can't see. If you can see up there, let's see if it moves the uh, yeah. camera. Well, there's it's, a delay. Uh, yeah, there's a delay. Are you guys seeing, are you guys getting any delay when it comes to, um, the voice? Is the voice, is there a voice delay? 
Now you can see those shelves up there. We'll, we'll talk about fly traps later. I can see the thing. <laughs> I love that nope. people say that we need fly traps yeah. because, <laughs> you know, it cuts yeah. down, but it by no means gets rid of all the flies. Okay, John Wiles says it's matched up. Good. So you saw uh, the shelves up there, and the shelves, that's where you cleaned, you pulled all the stuff out of there, and you wiped everything down. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, all the soot off the walls, too. And We'll talk about that later. Oh, okay. <laughs> One dirty thing at a time. <laughs> so I think, I mean, we never experienced fly poop before. No. We, I mean... If I did, I didn't know what it was. Yeah. And I just thought it was dirt. Right. And I think a lot of people who move off grid, who live on a homestead, they don't realize what they're going to encounter, especially if they have chickens. Because what brings the flies in? It's the chickens. It's the sheep. It's the cow. It's the manure that happens on a homestead. Yeah. And and if you're going to have chickens, like if you if, – if, if you have livestock or chickens, you probably know this already, but um, if you have animals, if you're going to have animals, you're going to have flies. And so what do you do about that? Um, we have decided, we, a couple years ago, we started looking into some fly traps. And they have those bag fly traps that you can hang in places, you know, they sell at the hardware store or places like that. However, um, those fly traps... Are, I think are limited in their ability to catch flies. So what we have done, we found a couple years ago, I found a solar, it's called a solar fly trap from a company called Arbico. And they're kind of pricey. They're like 80 bucks a piece or something like that. 80 bucks a piece, something like that. And, but the reviews on them were phenomenal. And I waited, I, last year, or a year before last, when I saw them, I didn't buy them. I was like, oh, they're too expensive. And then the, that year was the year, it was just a horrible year for flies. It was just absolutely insane. Yeah. Honestly, I think, I just want to say that I'm still cleaning from that year. Yeah. Because I don't think I made it through the entire house after that year. <laughs> it was insane. The amount of flies. And, you know, because you have sheep, again, you have the chickens, and the chickens are constantly running around the house, and they're pooping wherever they go. Um, we, don't, we don't wear boots. We don't wear shoes in the house because when you're outside, you come inside, you take your shoes off because your chances of you walking through chicken poop is, is it's like better than, you know, an army guy walking through a minefield and hitting a mine. I mean, it's just crazy. You're going to get poop on your boots. It's just the way it is. And so... Um, now, there's benefits to that, too. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. But the issue is that there's poop out there, and flies are attracted to it. They lay their eggs in it, and they reproduce in it, and you're going to have flies. So last year, I decided to bite the bullet, and I bought the Arbico solar fly traps, and they were phenomenal. The, the reviews were absolutely correct on them. For 80 bucks, it's a reusable trap that you can use every year. It's made of metal and it, um, uh, it comes with their own proprietary uh, uh, bait that is really easy for you to replicate. It's basically uh, baking soda, like a baking soda and or sodium bicarbonate powder and yeast. Simple. That's it. And you can make that yourself. You can get all that stuff at the store. And when when you put it into a, a, a container and let it, and shake it up with water and let it sit for like a week, when you open the top of it, it smells absolutely horrible. But it brings in the flies like crazy, and those traps work flawlessly. I mean, they're just great. And they catch more than flies. They catch other bugs too. So it, it's just crazy. Plus, all the bugs you catch, you can take the lid off once they're dead inside and give them to your chickens. It's extra food if you want to do that too. Extra protein for your chickens. They'll, they'll devour them up. Um, so it's, again, it's reusable. It's not like the fly traps you get at the store where you have to buy a new one every year or every few weeks or whatever. You, you got to replace those. Um, so we had those two fly traps are on the homestead and we had some other disposable fly traps on the homestead and there was a noticeable difference, right? Yeah. It was, mm -hmm. it was, I mean, it's, it's noticeable. Yeah. Very noticeable. But I, I don't think that anything. No, you and I were going to get rid of the flies totally. Is, yeah. I mean, it's never going to be like a city if you, suburb. Yeah, if you don't like flies, it, it, here's the deal. If you want livestock and chickens and things like that and you don't like flies, this is not for you. 
I'm just not. I'm sorry. I don't like flies. Well, I mean, then this is not for you. <laughs> we deal with the flies. We deal with the flies. It just is what it is, you know. But um, it's just something you have to deal with. It's what it comes down to. Now, um, people are like, why? I've had people ask me, why don't you keep chickens in a coop or, you know, in a different area of the homestead? I think there's an added benefit of allowing your chickens to roam around your home. Um, number one, I, I just think it's amazing that chickens can walk anywhere they want and go wherever they want. I think it's cool to have chickens. It's just part of the ambiance of a homestead to have chickens. Ambiance. Right? Maybe. So, but I wouldn't I wouldn't use that word, but I would you know character. Yeah, maybe. all right, adds character to a homestead. We have chickens running around. Yeah. So, okay, but and I, I've told we've talked about this before. So I think that having chickens around your homestead reduces the amount of insects and bugs you're going to find in your home because they're constantly on patrol around your house all the time. Okay, they're always walking around and they're eating whatever they find. Remember, like we lived in other parts of Arkansas before we moved here, and we saw we saw um, uh, uh, scorpions. Yeah, we have never seen a scorpion here. Why? Because we have chickens that walk around our homestead all the time, and we have, we've heard stories of people finding horror stories of people finding a scorpion in their bed, or in in the house, mm-hmm. or on their couch. You know, that never happens. Because chickens eat scorpions, and they're constantly on patrol around your house. And when we used to live in the city, every winter when the temperatures started to get cold, the bugs came inside. (laughs) Right? Yeah. It doesn't happen here. (laughs) There are no bugs out there. I mean, there are bugs out there, but, you know, the the crawling ground bugs, they're not there. The spiders, we have, you get spiders in here every once in a while. It happens. Mm -hmm. But it's rare. It's rare compared to how it was in the city. I'm just reading the comments and Benjamin Turner. You guys, the Turners, um, Joshua had a spider that he, oh, this must have been three years ago now, one summer. And it was after he had read Charlotte's Web. It's been a while ago now. But he, yeah, he asked me not to kill it because it was actually doing his job. It was catching flies in its web. In the bathroom. Yeah. So I let him keep Charlotte for a while. I don't keep Charlotte. <laughs> anyway. He um, had fun with it. Well, I know. I know. <laughs> Benjamin says, good for Joshua. <laughs> okay. It was a long time ago. Now. Um, anyway, he so. He would not do that today. He's too old for that kind no, of stuff. No. The, the only other bug that we, I mean, because we don't have a lot of ground bugs, the, it's really the flying bugs that we have issues with, and namely the flies, and once a year we have issues with the ladybugs, really. Yeah. Ladybugs, they're not really ladybugs, they're Asian beetles, which are different than ladybugs. They're more orange, and they bite, and they smell. Um, we have issues with those, but um, yeah, so flies. You have anything else to add on flies? Um... Oh, there's always more to add on flies. <laughs> but. Not right now. So let's talk about soot. Soot, yeah. <laughs> so today you were cleaning the walls, I saw, and you said, hey, can you see? Did you ever, did you, did you I made it around to in front of the window. It's really only on the upper part of the walls, like um, next to the ceiling. And the crown molding and probably about at least two feet below the ceiling gets just a film of soot on it. And so really, I mean, most people would say, well, why bother? You know, you don't even know it's there until you start wipe, cleaning, wiping. Mm-hmm. But you can see the fly poop. And so I have been wiping and then I realize, oh, wow, you know, my washcloth comes away from the wall black because <laughs> of the soot. And so I don't know. We're really I'm, winning. 
I'm the kind of person that once I get started with a project, like I go at it full bore, like, and, and, and I'll, I won't do it halfway. And so, um, you know, have you ever, I, uh, people, I don't know, there's other people like me out there for sure, where you get started doing something and then you realize one thing leads to another and then all of a sudden you're deep into this really big project and you just keep going. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that's that's the way I clean, I guess. And I kind of don't, I mean, nobody really loves cleaning. I don't think anyone really says, woohoo, I jump up and down, yay, I get to clean today. But um, I don't hate it. If I hated it, I wouldn't do it constantly. No, because something that's clean makes you feel good. Yeah, yeah, I love, I love just the clean, just, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. <laughs> He makes fun of me all the time because I can't let something go. It's okay. It's good. It's I, I like the fact that she keeps a very clean house. You know, so I mean, it's really spick and span. I mean, it's not like you know military drill sergeant type thing, but I mean, she just likes a, she. She's in her happy place when she can sit down and enjoy a clean house. And I mean, come on, guys, you like. You know, a wife in her happy place. Hmm. Then paint it gray. Yes. You know what? I was thinking that exact same thing today. You're going to paint the house again? No. I am not going to paint the house again. But I was kind of really thinking that... Sit down, wee tree. There was... (laughs) Sit down. A reason. You probably can't tell in our videos because of the lighting, but our cabinets in the kitchen are actually light gray. They are not white. Um, I don't know. Can you tell? Did you guys think the kitchen cabinets were white? I just would like to know. Um, anyway, so I was thinking, you know, it's probably a good thing that I painted the kitchen cabinets gray because it really does help that way. Yeah. What was I going to say? Um, yeah, we're really winning the hearts and minds of, of people who are thinking about homesteading. Yeah, sorry. This is that kind of episode. <laughs> the real truth. The real, the real. Here's the real poop on homesteading. You're gonna get poop on your boots. Um, so soot. We've had people um, who were concerned about a wood stove. We've left comments before because they worry about does it cause asthma? Does it? Um, you know, I'm not talking about right now. I'm talking about in our videos where you can actually see in the light. Not like right now. You couldn't tell. Well, yeah, you well, yeah. couldn't tell in the lantern light. I'm just curious. Yeah, not right now. Um, yeah, people are saying they think that they're in, they were white. They were white. Okay. They're just, yeah, they're, they're, they're gray. But um, what was I going to say? I was saying something about... Yes, warm water and dish soap. Actually, sorry, I'm... Reading the comments. We can't read comments until later. Here. Oh, well, warm a- water and dish soap. That's what I use. <laughs> warm water and dish soap. All right. Okay, he, we got, tur- we, he turned off the comments. We got to so stay, we gotta stay focused. We have a time schedule. We have to st- keep okay. on. To keep all the, all the content. Um, we have to get the news, too. So um, my point is we've had people contact us and ask us about breathing problems when it comes to a wood stove in our home. Do we, does it cause, because people are, I think people are worried about that. Because wood stoves are so demonized today, you know, as pollutants of the, of the environment. And one of the reasons is because they also, they, they affect your health negatively. So you're saying inhaling smoke on a regular basis. Because obviously we have soot over time, over the years, does accumulate. Um, we have not had issues with breathing. I mean, Joshua... Uh, our son has some allergies already, and he has had, had asthma, but it's not, we don't relate no, it to that. No, it's not, certainly not exasperated by smoke. Um, if anything, it's exasperated by any kind of processed food in his diet. Mm-hmm. I, I we, really we have, feel that that's what causes it when it flares up. Is the is like him you know, eating some gluten or wheat or, or something um, like that? Well... I mean, a large amount he of can it. have some gluten, but it flares up, especially when it's any kind of processed white flour kind of food. 
Right. So, I mean, anything, he's okay in moderation, but if he goes for an extended period, it's, it, it, it bothers him. Right. And that's, that's not here. I mean, that, we've noticed that other places too where um, we've been traveling or wherever, you know, so it's not just here. But I don't think the, the stove affects us that way. You know, it, it doesn't, I can't see that. Um, if, if we had noticed that, we would definitely, you know, have to well, rethink something. But It seems to me like we heard somebody else having issues with a wood stove, and they said that that's why they got, they went on grid. Didn't we hear about that one time? Yeah, I mean, maybe. Or, or they started to heat with propane because, okay. Your mileage may vary. For us, <laughs> it has not. I mean, I, uh, Okay. We, you know, we were just talking about this before the show. We love wood heat. We, we like it. it it's uh, comfortable for us. Um, now, even when she goes to uh, the city somewhere, like if we have to stay at my parents or something, uh, her lips get chapped or just because of the heat that's in those homes. Um, it's different. In fact, I think, I think it's better because we also keep pots on the wood stove and it's always putting moisture in the air to moisturizing and... Um, I just, I could not imagine living, I know, I've know i always wanted a fireplace in our home. You know what? I don't even think that we get static electricity. Yeah, that's another thing, too. I've, no, I've noticed that, too. I totally forgot about that. We don't, yeah, we, I hadn't seen static electricity since the last time I went to a gas station, actually. <laughs> I got, got out of the car, and I was like, ooh, static electricity. And I've always heard a lot of people's cars blowing up when you huh. get static electricity when you try to fill the gas. But I don't see you don't see static electricity in the home. No. This doesn't happen. No. I don't know. I just I don't see a problem with it. There is again, it's just give and take with everything you have. You're gonna have soot. Um, sometimes when when the fire is completely out and we have to start the fire from scratch, smoke will come out of yeah. the, the of the vent. Yeah. Uh, of the uh, what's it called the um. What's that thing called? Um. Why can't we think of that word? It's the little... The damper. The damper. Yeah, the, the smoke damper. will come out the damper when we're trying to start the fire at first. But that's probably where most of that soot came from because there are times yeah. when it comes out a little bit. Well, it only happens when the stove is, you know, bone cold when you light it. Yeah. If it hasn't been lit in a while and it's gotten completely cold, yeah, then um, it needs to get started venting again. And that's when... It comes out. The, yeah, because, yeah. I mean, it, it, I'm sure there's some scientific reason about, you know, the, how the how the vent works with the different pulling temperatures from different we don't, sides. We don't believe in science. I'm just kidding. Yes, you do. <laughs> it's all fake. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so when you first start the, the, the stove, then it'll, it'll do that. But otherwise, but that's probably what the buildup is from, you know, just mm-hmm. – Numerous, numerous, numerous times of that happening. Honestly, again, like, okay, I feel that I should say that if you didn't start wiping, you probably wouldn't notice it. No, you wouldn't. But when you start wiping and then you get the wall wet, you know, and it starts doing the little drips, then you can see, oh, it's, you know, sooty drips coming down the wall. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But I just, I think about years gone by when they did not have... A closed wood stove and the amount of soot that would have collected on their walls throughout the winter that is why spring cleaning came into being. spring cleaning I exactly. really believe that that exactly. was the origin of spring cleaning was finally you know we can open up the house we can air it out we can wash off our walls and you know, they took all of their bedding out in the yard. All of the furniture got set out in the yard and scrubbed, and the walls were scrubbed. Everything was done. And so um, I mentioned Farmer Boy, the book Farmer Boy, last week. And they talked about their spring cleaning routine and whitewashing the basement and just the extent of all of the work they did to um, clean everything in the spring, honestly, is really inspiring. <laughs> you realize you aren't the only one? Is that what it was? No, it's just like I said, you know, you said, it's my happy place. 
<laughs> Everything to be, everything's clean. Everything's clean. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. So really the point comes down to this, guys. If you're going to go homestead, you're going to have flies. You're going to have fly poop, okay, if you have livestock um, and chickens. And you're, if you have a wood stove, you're going to live off-grid. You're going to have soot. Small amounts, you know, not usually noticeable, but it's just part of part of what you're going to have and that like anything else you just have to deal with it and clean it and if you feel you know so desired maybe you don't care about cleaning it. yeah maybe you don't care and i think that that's fine too because honestly i mean i have a certain amount of envy for people who can let things go <laughs> i'm just saying i do all right folks hey listen i want to get to some um News articles. Uh, there were some cool things that happened this week. Well, some interesting things that happened this week. And um, first things first, we're going to go over to... Whoa, there I am. Um, return to now. So I posted this on Facebook this week, and it was actually a link uh, from Joel Salatin's website, I believe. Uh, let's see. Is that right? I thought it was Salatin. Salatin? Is that how you pronounce it? I don't know how to pronounce it. I don't know that I ever have. Basically, it's a proposed law in Tennessee would make it illegal to drink unpasteurized milk from your own cow, goat, or sheep. Goat or sheep. Make it illegal. And um, it got a lot of hits. It got a lot of notoriety. He says his proposed bill would remove current language in the state law that guarantees the right to consume unpasteurized milk from an animal that you either fully or partially own. Because a lot of people, um, they buy shares in a cow. Uh, they go in with like a you know, dozen other families and they each own a share of the cow. And so they're, they're each entitled to a certain amount of that milk. And, you know, they get that milk every week or every few times a week or whatever, you know, they, they work it out to. Um, so it says uh, current Tennessee laws... Uh, Tennessee law, law allows citizens to obtain raw milk for their own personal consumption if they have independent or partial ownership interest in any hooved animal. This has given rise to an arrangement called herd shares in seven states where members of private buying clubs can purchase partial ownership in or share of a cow or herd of cows so that they can have access to unpasteurized milk. Raw milk is legal in some degree in 43 states, according to realmilk.com, which tracks the legal status of raw milk in all 50 states. So, um... It says, oh yeah, Joel Salatin, this is where it says right here. Uh, the proposed law was apparently triggered by an E. coli outbreak in Knox County, according to a blog post by the famous regener regenerative farmer and author, author Joel Salatin. And so that brings us over to his blog over here where he writes about it. And it says, Tennessee, illegal to drink milk from your own cow. So it says, just when you think you are making progress in the food freedom arena, along comes a kind, sincere, minded, loving zealot to throw a monkey wrench in things. I like how he words stuff. Such is the case in Tennessee where Senator Briggs, a medical doctor, of course, has filed Senate Bill 15 to criminalize drinking the milk you own from your own cow or milk from your own cow. An E. coli outbreak in Knox County apparently triggered the draconian response from this well-meaning doctor. Of course, as is common in these cases, the outbreak was never actually tied to raw milk, but government bureaucrats color any opportunity to question, and science generally flies out the window. Uh, the bill prohibits a person who owns a partial interest of a hoofed animal. We just read that from the other article. So it's getting a lot of play, um, and again, I had like... When I posted this, I think on Facebook last time I looked at it, it had like over 250 shares. Um, so it's getting around the web quite a bit. Other people I've seen share this as well. And uh, I told people on my post, I said, if you live in Tennessee, get on your phone because the only way this is going to stop if the voters speak up. And uh, raw milk, it seems to me, has become more and more desired. Um, it's become It's become – something that more and more families are learning about and you know getting a taste of and enjoying. So it's only gained in popularity over the last couple of years, in my opinion. So this, um, this doctor is in for a heck of a fight, I think, especially in some places like Tennessee. I mean, places like New York, I would think would have a problem banning this. But in Tennessee, where there's a lot of farmers, a lot of ranches, a lot of homesteaders, um, they're going to have a fight on their hands, I think. And the legislators are going to have some issues um, trying to get this passed and not making people angry. 
Um, can you think of any food that should be illegal, he says. Yeah, I didn't think so. I mean, Twinkies might come to mind. But, you know, yeah. I think probably he would agree with that. But, I mean, you know, I don't like legislation that limits yeah, freedom. But even then, I mean, if someone wants to buy their Twinkies, you they should be able to buy their buy Twinkies. Buy your Twinkies, you know, whatever. But, I mean, is it really... Do we really need Twinkies? Okay. Um, next article. Major snowstorm snarls travel from St. Louis to Columbus this weekend. My parents live in St. Louis. They got slammed. There was people I, I had read online who got um, anywhere from a foot or more of snow in some places. And, um, you know, I, I thought this was interesting. I wasn't planning on sharing this tonight. But what I thought was interesting, we'll go back to the screen here. Um, what I thought was interesting was something my mom told me on the phone. And it totally makes sense because she said, you know, years ago when I was a kid and I lived in the neighborhood, when a snowstorm came, it was like cha-ching because that meant money. You could knock on people's doors and you could take your shovel and you could shovel a driveway and you could get anywhere from, depending on you know who was paying, 10 to 20 bucks. Yeah. I mean, because that was worth, I mean, for someone not to have to go do that themselves, that was worth 10 bucks or 20 bucks or, and to do the, 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 the sidewalks too. You know, it included everything, the sidewalks, because it was a subdivision. And she said that there was no knocks on the door. No knocks. No, and, and people were looking for, for kids yeah. who would want to do this. And, and she said she mentioned somebody in the neighborhood who was looking for somebody, and she, she wasn't sure that she ever got a response. So um, it's just, you know, the days we live in where there's free money out there. And it's not it, free, but... Well, it's, it's, just, it's just there for the it's, taking. It's available for... It's available for someone who is, you know, can grab a shovel Entrepreneurial and, spirit. Yeah. And we make our kids work for money. I mean, they don't, they, you know, they don't get an allowance. They earn their money here. Yeah. So it's like you know, there's chores they have to do. Certain, there's chores they, they do regular, every day that they don't get paid for at all. That's just chores, right? But there's other things that they can do to earn money. Um, all of the seeds we sell that are for sale right now on AmericanHomestead.com. You can see the link right there. Right there. Um, they package, my kids package all those seeds, and they earn money uh, for, from the sales of those seeds. Yeah. So, you know. You know, buy some seeds. Uh, but, yeah, they get paid for that. And um, anyway, so my thing is it's just it shows the sign of the times we're in. It's that people are not teaching their kids to go out there and take advantage of situations where you could earn a living or earn some money. Um, instead, we're giving the children today everything they want and, um, you know, letting them stay inside all the time and play video games. Hallelujah. Amen. Right? Okay. All right. Next next story. Sorry about that. I just had, it just, you know, it just, it totally was true. And I saw that. And I, I mean, I just, it brought me back to those memories as a kid, you know. Lawn mowing was another one. Mowing lawns. Mm -hmm. yeah, when I was 15 and a half, my, I got a work permit and I went to work at McDonald's. I couldn't believe, I was telling my mom tonight, you know, the, my first time I got a $200 check. I thought I was rich. And then I was angry about when I saw how much money they took out of my check for taxes. Yeah. But anyway, a whole other story. Okay. Um, so uh, last story here. Industry wary of alternatives. After we get done with this, we'll go to the chat. And industry wary of alternatives tries to protect a word meat. So I saw this. And I thought it was kind of interesting. And at first I kind of agreed with it. But then I, you know, I thought about what we talked about with the Twinkies. Um, more than four months after Missouri became the first U.S. state to regulate the term meat on product labels, Nebraska's powerful farm groups are pushing for similar protection from veggie burgers, tofu dogs, and other items that look and taste like real meat. Nebraska lawmakers will consider a bill this year defining meat as any edible portion of a livestock or poultry carcass or part thereof and excluding lab-grown or insect or plant-based food products. It would make it a crime to advertise or sell something as meat that is not derived from poultry or livestock. Uh, and I think it's it includes like a fine and even jail time. Jail time, if you called something meat that was not meat. I don't. Know, I don't know. I mean, first, well, I like the fact that that meat is protected. They're saying that there's labels 
to say that something is meat that isn't. Right. So what these people are doing, like with tofu or some of these other soy products, they're saying, oh, this is meat. It's meat alternatives. Or they're calling it, you know, the other meat or, you know, different on their packaging. And what these people are trying to do, they would say, hey, no, let's, let's call meat meat so that th- it protects the livestock owners and, you know, people who are selling to the industry. Yeah. If, if my cow is going to end up in a package, it has to be called meat. I just want my food to be what my food is. Right. Well, I I, to, I understand that, and I and, I, and again, it, it, I hate. It should re- be recognizable. I right. You know, I, and I don't like regulation of any kind. But um, when I saw this, I was like, well, it makes sense. However, I think that there's so cl- instead of like a processed cheese food, it's a processed meat food. I thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> but what happens? <laughs> <laughs> right. Process, processed meat food. Oh, come on. That was a good one. It is a good one. It was fine. <laughs> but I mean, but I don't understand yet. What happens when they start cloning meat? It's not real meat. Yeah. But it's like cloned oh, from an animal. No, no. I mean, lab grown. That's coming out. I mean, they're lab grown. What about GMO meat? GMO Genetically modified cows. It's come, it comes from a cow. But is it, in my opinion, real meat? Eh, not really. Anyway, interesting thing about this article is that the person who proposed this law is actually a vegetarian. I was a vegetarian lawmaker. Hmm. And she says, hey, listen, you know, I'm a vegetarian, but I understand that our livelihood in Nebraska is from livestock. And we need to protect that livelihood. Yeah. So that makes sense. Um, but it's the it's the vegetarian, no meat eaters. You know some of these industries. You know that are pushing tofu and soy based products that are angry about this because they want to call their products meat. Anyway, I left a link in the description below. You can read about it. You know, make up your own mind. Again, I'm I'm one of those guys who is always anti legislation. However, on something like this, it kind of makes sense. But again, you know, I don't like legislation. I think. Lawyers and, and politicians do more harm than good on most of the things that they touch. So anyway, I thought it was an interesting article, and I know a lot of homesteaders are into raising their own meat. That's why I think it's relevant. Um, we definitely, I mean, we're raising sheep. We have chickens. Um, we, we, we enjoy our eggs. And obviously, raw milk is a big thing, too, because if our cow ever does get pregnant, we'll be able to enjoy our own raw milk. Um, yeah. So that's why it's relevant. All right, let's head back over to there. And let's go check in with the chat. We got about uh, 20 minutes left. So, um, all right, so I think we're going to do our giveaway. So let me go. Hold on a second. Here, keep them talking. Keep them talking. Uh, wait a minute, I got to get my light. Hold on. Let me go get a prize. I'll be right back. Read the comments. Um, okay. Does anybody know what the abbreviation TVP means? Textured vegetable protein. That's all a soy burger is. Um, I thought that was one of the names for MSG. Textured vegetable protein. Um, I could be wrong. I thought that was an MSG thing. Um... What was for dinner? We had, actually, speaking of raw milk, I made uh, homemade biscuits with spelt flour that I soaked in soured milk all day. I've been soaking my flour to kind of, um, I don't, I just kind of like the word pre-digest it a little bit because the sour milk um, breaks down some of the gluten and, um I feel like it makes it's it's good for health as well as it makes like a light and fluffy kind of um, baked product. What's it's, TVP? Um, textured vegetable protein. They said. Anyway, oh. so I made biscuits with my soaked flour that I soaked all day with my soured milk, and um, I made egg sandwiches, just like a fried egg sandwich. And um, I made some cabbage and chicken soup. That sounds good. 
So you can eat it tomorrow. For lunch? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Zach doesn't eat dinner a lot, and I never eat lunch, so we're just really strange. So I'll make dinner, and then he'll eat what I made for dinner most of the time for lunch the next day. She's doing OMAD. I'm doing TOMAD. But not always. Some days you do OMAD. Or TMAD. <laughs> Jamie, <laughs> do you still make sourdough? Um, yeah, that's a loaded question. Okay, so... Make more sourdough. No. Um, and the reason I don't is that we do not eat a lot of baked things. Um, normally... Bread is just not a regular part of our diet. And if we do eat it, then, you know, maybe it's once a week. So sourdough. Date night. Date night bread. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) sourdough is one of those things that I feel like in order to keep up with it, especially if you don't have refrigeration, you have to be eating a lot of bread in order to not be constantly throwing out your flour so I don't like doing that plus I really like to keep things simple so I'm trying to lose weight wee tree he's not starving I got plenty of reserves and hey you know (laughs) it works the only way I've ever found to eat less is just to not eat as often okay so we gotta do this way hey we'll come back to your questions I see a lot of questions in there I want to get to um, so ask them again if we didn't get to them, okay, guys? Um, let's go ahead and do the trivia question. You guys are going to love this one. And, all right, so we're going to tell them not to use Google. Don't use Google if you don't have to. Some of you guys may, some of you guys may know this. It's a two-part question, okay? Here it is. What is the world's largest cattle breed, and in what country does it originate from? Mm, I think I know this. Okay, wh- whisper in my ear. Wait, hold on. Turn the mic. Okay, so what is the world's largest cattle breed and in what country does it originate? What is the world's largest cattle breed? Black Angus, no. 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 <laughs> Japan? Nothing is big in Japan. Um, no. Oh, and Ben Turner can't participate. The Turners can't participate. Molly Miller, you're half right. We need our Google. (laughs) Uh, No, it's not in Africa. No, 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 no. At least they're honest. Yeah, at least no one's Googling it. Someone's Googling it. Ben Turner's probably Googling it because he knows he can't win again. Um, come on, someone's going to get it here. Gerbil. No. Gerbil. Is that even a, is that even a cow? <laughs> the bullet train is big in Japan. Duck, duck, go. <laughs> it's, a, it's a different search engine. Um, come on now. <laughs> Where is the world's largest cattle breed and in what country does it originate from? I Googled, but I won't say. Sandra Buck says. Jennifer Wiles, Italy, yes, you're half right. What is the other? What's the name of the breed? That's the country, but what is the what is the breed name? What is the name of the breed? Someone, first one posted out, you get it, you get a prize. So I got I'll tell you what the prize is in a minute. Come on. Yeah, Sassy Fraz gets it. Chinina, Chinina, Chinina is the name of it. Yes. Chinina. 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 Chin. The white one. Yes, it's white, and it's from. It is from Italy. That's correct. The Italian Chinina. Chinina. No, I think it's Chinina. I looked it up earlier before before the show. Yeah, Chinina. Chinina. So, um. Sassy Fraz, congratulations. You are going to get 
um, a, a full size large bottle of Nixol wound and scare, well, wound and scare, wound and skin solution. <laughs> Wound and scare. Wound and scare. Wound and skin solution. Uh, we use this on our homestead. Um, works great for our livestock. You can use it also on yourself. Um, you know, it's it's totally fine. All natural product. No harmful chemicals. All good stuff. We really like Nick Salt on the homestead. So uh, we're going to give one of those to you. What you need to do, Sassy, is contact me on the website in AmericanHomestead.com. Use the contact page and send me your address and um, tell me that you are sassy and that you won the Nixall. And I will get this out to you this week. All right, Tim will send this out. Okay. All right. Over back to... Let's go back over to the chat. Okay. Um, what was the, um, what was this? I don't remember all the questions we were talking about sourdough. I sourdough. Think. Oh, somebody had tacos, venison tacos. The music will have venison tacos. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. I our sugar cane got red fungus. Like Do you ever get red fungus? Uh, uh, Eric Melinda Crawford says, um, I don't know what red, red fungus is. Our sugar cane never gets that. Or, or, or sorghum never got that, so I don't know. But, I mean, our, we haven't had a problem growing that year after year. Um, we haven't had an issue yet. I, it, they do sometimes get aphid attacks, but that was that's the only thing. But they're, they're mild, um, and they've never affected the actual seeding or the actual sugaring of, of the sorghum. Um, kefir, oh, yeah, kefir. Do you make kefir, Water, uh, milk kefir? Milk kefir, uh, no. We used to, though. Yeah. It was to. good when we did it. It was really good. Maybe once we have a milk cow, maybe we could do that again. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would do it again. Um, Eric Melissa called it, calls it red rot. I've never seen that. It grew great, but red streak. Red streak. I mean, there's red streaks in them, but they still taste great. I mean, I never had that issue. I mean, we still squeezed it and got the juice out of it, and it was fine. We've had, we've had. I've seen red streaks that go through it, but it doesn't affect the taste or anything. It's fine. There's sometimes there's red streaks in them. Yeah. If that's called red rot, I mean, they grew up and they seeded wonderfully and they, they produce lots of sugar and syrup. So it's never been an issue. I mean, it mm -hmm. still works. Juice are still working good. Yeah, yeah, it's working good. Um, I have good kefir rains from Belarus. Ooh. On your OMAD diet, are you staying with keto? No. No. Um, just my feeling, um, and I can get really heated on the topics, so I apologize if I, cause I, uh -oh. I don't like to step on people's toes. Um, I really do not believe that keto is sustainable. I don't oh, feel like it's Watch out. a long term thing. I don't think that we were ever created to subsist on a largely no carb diet. I think that there are seasons in life in a homestead that, um, God gave bread for the sorry, heart. Sorry, I just, I really truly believe that there are seasons. God gave bread for the for heart those of man. Who are a, living an agrarian lifestyle, which would have been everybody pre industrial revolution. Everyone. That the only food available would have been carbohydrate based, whether it was potatoes. We potatoes, corn, rice. Eat seasonally. You know, whatever it was. They didn't have supermarkets back then. So anyway, so that's that's my answer for that. I I don't um just personally I think that keto is not sustainable because you always want something else. I mean, you, I could never force myself to keep at it, and that's why it never worked. But I think that the only thing that can work is that if you allow yourself to eat from a variety of different foods that you enjoy. <laughs> um. After two weeks on keto, I ended up in the ER. Oh, my goodness. Um, we felt sick on keto. 
I mean, there's so many people that love it. So, you know, hey, I, if it works for you, do it. And yeah. And, and I can't, I can't demonize anything that works for somebody because I have done a lot of thinking over the years since I've been heavy, which is most of my life. And I think that everyone's body chemistry is slightly different. So I can't say that what I know that I do well with a large amount of protein and healthy fats in my diet with some carbs. Anime Anime says, eat what grows, where it grows, when it grows. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, in, in our society today, we have a large amount of choices. And so we have everything available to us all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. What did I see? I saw something I wanted to answer. Um, uh, it growing anything new this year. Um, we talked about that. What are we going to grow new this year? Um, I don't know. You know, I'm kind of at a point where I like everything we have right now growing. And so I'm going to, I'm always going to experiment with new things. A lot of times I'll get those new things from the, from the farmer's market, like shishito peppers. We grew those last year. I will grow those forever now. They're awesome. Mm -hmm. And, um, I got those from the farmer's market. Um, a lady had those at the the farmer's market and, and that's where I got them. I know they sell them at Baker Creek now too. I mean, you can get them from Baker Creek. Uh, but shishito peppers, um, get them from my website. I'm selling the seeds. These will be the most prolific pepper you ever grow ever again in your life. Shishito peppers. They're available right now at my website. But I'll grow those forever from now on. Um, and they're sweet. They're a sweet pepper. Um, I don't know. I'll, I'll try. So I'll experiment. I'll, 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 I'll let my experiments be known once I start doing it. So I, I haven't decided yet on what it's going to be. But it will, I always do two or three things. Um where do you find a juicer without a PTO? I don't have a full tractor. Um, well, they have those antique juicers that you can get, like sorghum juicers, but those are expensive. And beware that a lot of times the bearings in those antique juicers are made of lead. So you have to get them replaced if they haven't been replaced already. And that costs money. Um, and there, and sometimes those antiques are very expensive. If you're going to pay anyway, any because I've seen a lot of those things, they're like $2,000, $1,800 or more. If you're going to spend that much money on a juicer, go ahead and get a, like a really powerful one from like Tubo Biz. Uh, that's where we got ours, and it was fifteen hundred dollars. Okay, and that's shipped. So I would recommend going to TuboBiz.com. T U B O B I Z. Tubo Biz. They even have a YouTube channel. He he's an amazing guy. He has a whole, his own testimony of how he had cured a cancer by juicing uh, sugar cane because it's so high in nutrients. Um, you can get one of his machines for $1,500 delivered. It ships from overseas um, where he makes it. He lives there at the production plant. And that would be just as good uh, as one of these antiques that you may have to work on and spend time restoring. Um, let's see. Let's see. A paleo. I'm trying to, is there anything else? Hey, if you want to ask questions, put it in full, put it in full uh, cap so I can see it. Um, somebody wants to know our take on the sabbatical year. So day. yeah, so this that will start this next year. So this is our last year of gardening. Um, so this will be year number six, and we will plant as much as I possibly can, and then we will give the garden a rest. During that rest year, we can we'll just let it lay, and a lot of times things will just come up on their own. Probably tomatoes, probably. Um, peppers, um, maybe not peppers, but probably cucumbers for sure always grow up by themselves, some melons, things like that. And so throughout the year, on our seventh year, we'll just go out and, and pick things we want to eat when they're available, and that's it. Everything else will be stored. Uh, so we'll skip a year uh, to let the garden rest, um, and then we'll uh, you know, start again the year after. Um. So it's our, this will be our sixth year on the homestead this year. Uh, uh, Sabbath year will be hard, too tempting. Yeah, that's what got Israel in trouble because they, they didn't do it. They never did it. So just keep doing it. Just go ahead and do it. Put your trust in God and he will provide, I guarantee you. What area of Ozarks are you guys in? We are moving south. We are in the northwest Arkansas area. Um, 
sabbatical year wasn't as hard as I imagined. Planning is important, of course. Yeah, it's not as hard. Just got to plan and trust. Uh, do you guys buy produce from neighborhood neighbors during that time? Um, not really so much. I mean, we, we'll trade back and forth. So people ask us, you know, like our, our, our sheep, um, we'll trade back and forth some of our firstborn males because we don't eat them. We'll, we'll give them to somebody else or we'll trade them uh, for, you know, one of their firstborn males. Um, and, and there's a whole, we won't get into that in this video, but um, yeah, we, we, we do a little bit of barter and trading sometimes here and there. And um, I, I like to buy some stuff from, from the um, farmer's market here and there too. So, yeah. Sent email, reshirt, shipped to Australia. Shalom. Um, is that, I don't know what that means. Is someone sending us another t-shirt? Um, I think they want a, one of those shirts you talked about last week. Oh, okay. Send an email. All right. Yeah. Uh, the Gunner Ram shirts are still on sale. If you want a Gunner Ram shirt, go to our website, order one. That'd be great. And, uh, support the homestead. If, um, yeah, I remember that bit that now, if you want to ship to one to Australia, I think we sent you an email for that. So if you send me an email back, I will figure out the cost, and Tim will figure out the cost if we haven't already, and we'll get one out to you. But we have to figure out the cost. Are you close to Izzard or Baxter counties? I've never heard of those counties. We're in northwest Arkansas. Um, let's see. Rabbit droppings for fertilizer. Your opinion since it's unclean. Oh, yeah. So this is a hot topic. Get well, ready. Get ready, boy. So, all right. I had someone, This is going to be worse than my keto rant. So, yeah. So, someone emailed me this week and says, I can't believe you put rabbit poop on your garden. Don't you know that rabbit is unclean? <laughs> Let me ask you this. How do you stop anything from pooping on your garden? Birds fly over your garden. They poop on your garden. There are worms in your garden. Worms. And I'm not going off on you. You're just asking a question. So just don't think I'm going I know, off on you. And yeah. I felt like that too. Yeah, I'm, so I, sorry. I, I, I'm sorry, Eric, Melinda. I'm not going off on you. I'm just, um, I'm just going off because this is something that's a hot topic of me. So just bear with me for he a moment. Gets excited. I get excited. I'm really excited. That's all it is. Worms poop. <laughs> insects poop. That's what dirt is made out of. Is dirt is made out of poop, and that's just that's what makes things grow. You're not eating the poop. Things are growing out of the poop. In the forest, deer poop and things grow out of the poop. You know, bears poop, you know, everything poops. Okay, what's that, what's that word? Well, what's that, um, everybody poops. Oh, it was, it was some kind of, I think it was in Scrubs episode or something. It's just everything it poops. Was a, there was a kid's show with that too. Yeah. I remember. And so what happens? It goes on the ground and then things grow out of it. Just because something poops doesn't make, you know, it unclean. The whole thing about... Unclean animals is in Leviticus 11. Animals that you eat, okay? What you do with their poop is fine. Um, you know, one guy got angry about um, me killing those raccoons and taking their fur because they're an unclean animal. <laughs> what are you laughing? Are you laughing about that or something else? Um, Sandra says, this is poop night, I see. This is poop night. Yeah, I guess so. Wow. But did you know that it's like in, in the Bible, there's mentions of pearls, Oysters are unclean. You have to touch an unclean animal yeah. to get the pearl out. Yeah. It's made by an unclean animal that you can't eat. It's okay. You know, I just, you know, I don't, I don't want anybody to feel offended. And if you, if you don't hold to the same dietary standards we do, that's okay. You do whatever you want to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. Okay. And, you know, we put rabbit poop on our garden because rabbit poop is the best thing you could absolutely put on your garden. It is the most fertile manure you can put in your garden to grow things right now. Oh. What? Somebody says there's a woman who ate rabbit poop. Well, she's got she's got a whole list of other problems. <laughs> if you if you're eating rabbit poop, then you have a whole list of other problems. Um, you know, sometimes you think that you've heard it all, and then something else comes back around. Are you alternating gardens to produce during resting? I don't need to alternate gardens. Um, I just need to rest my garden once every seven years, and it'll be fine. Um, but al alternating is what people use to get by. Because even farmers and agriculture, you know, mainstream agriculture know that it's good to rest your soil. I mean, this is something that is just well known in the industry. Um, and so what they do is they rotate. You know, I'm going to farm this one this year, and I'll give that a rest, you know, two years from now or something like that. 
Um, but, you know, we'll just give the homestead a rest, you know, on our seventh year, and we'll, we'll be fine. It won't be a big deal. Um, I, ho- I hope uh, Eric and Melinda are okay. Talk about, I mean, ugh, I'm just reading the comments. Talk oh, so- about trying someone- to get views. Like... Someone ate rabbit poop? I don't... Well, no. It's, they're saying that she print, pretended to, and then later on she revealed it was raisins or chocolate or something. But again, okay, why? Like, you know, let's just downgrade who we are and a reasonable thinking person just to get YouTube views, right? Have you ever thought of writing a homestead book from a woman's perspective? Thank you, Eric and Melinda. Yeah. Um, we've, we've thought about writing books. Yeah. And I actually have a couple chapters. Um, I just can't, uh, it's not, I don't know. (laughs) Okay. I tried. I, I, and I think that I could buckle down and probably do it. I just don't, I just don't think I want to. Yeah. It's, it's. She's a very good writer. We know that she, Jamie is an excellent writer and um, we are going to, she's going to write more. I am more interested in the philosophy of things and why things are interesting and the inspiration behind them than just the actual how to. And I think that I really am very, very bad at writing how to things because to me it's not inspiring like I want to know I want to know the thought process behind things and that's what's inspiring to me and so it seems to me that the publishing world just wants glossy how-to book that's what the internet that's what the whole that's that's basically what happened when we tried to submit some ideas to um, a literary agent um, it was basically how to. So. Yeah, we don't want to really do that. So anyway, all right, guys, thanks for tuning in. We really appreciate it. We'll see you next week, Sunday, Sunday nights, eight central, nine eastern. Good night, guys. See you next time in Olmsted. Bye.